called to order the uh, Delaware County Commissioner's meeting Monday, July 15, 2019, 9.04 a.m. Must we stand and do the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Oh. Good morning. Hope everybody had a nice weekend. Um, Mr. Craigcraft, we have a roll call, please. Mr. King. Here. Mr. Henry. Here. Ms. Reagan. Present. Mr. Stevens. Here. And we have a adult probation is BCC here. Right here. And you want to speak for us? Hi, it's Elizabeth Bat, DCCC. Um, we are asking that Lindsay Wilmus be the d adult probation representative on the DOC board. On the board. And that was voted by your board member. We have a pleasure. I'll make a motion we make that appointment. Second. Roll call. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, I don't think Mr. I don't believe he's here yet today. We don't have anybody from Flatland? No, not yet. We'll keep that table. Approval of minutes, please. Make a motion we approve July 1st, 2019 minutes. I'll oh, second. Roll call. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Okay. Can you tell us who the appointment again was? Lindsay Willis. Is it Willis or Williams? W-I-L-N-E-S. Okay. Thank you. Okay, it's Marta Moody. Basically, though. Flat. There she is. Yeah. Marta Moody, Executive Director for the Delaware Muncie Metropolitan Planning Commission. And I also have with me Spencer O'Dell from AR Engineering. Uh, they are the firm that has been working on the preparing the plat that is known <coughs> as <coughs> ABCDG subdivision. It's a two lot subdivision located on the easterly side of State Road 67, just south of where 300 West curves into 67. And I think when I filed that, did I file an aerial with you so you can sort yeah. of? Okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. And. Um, the plat committee met last Friday, and uh, there were several changes that were requested to the drawing. Um, so the one that you've got uh, in front of you has been changed significantly, and um, Spencer has <coughs> copies of it uh, for um, your signature should you approve it. Basically, your uh, part in this is the acceptance of right of way that they are dedicating for County Road 300 West. And it's an odd uh, piece of right of way because way back when, I'm not exactly sure when, the state came through and bought some right of way when they did improvements, but they didn't buy all the way to the center road of 300 West. So there's a 16 and a half foot strip of 300 West and then south of the state right of way, they're dedicating the required 25 feet of half right of way. And um, that is uh, the matter in front of you today. The plat committee um, uh, basically approved the plat pending changes to the drawing and uh, subject to the commissioner's acceptance of the right of way. So if you have any questions of me or Spencer, um, we'll be happy to. Would you like to tell, tell the public what is going to become on the road if this all? Or is that confidential? No, no. Uh, it's, so the the south parcel of, or lot two of the subdivision is uh, planned to be sold and developed um, with a, a drive off for um, both the state and the county road. It's for a Dollar General, right? We we had one in that area at one time that uh, saw a lot of. 
Yes. Yeah. For the rezoning. That was up at 400 West, and they were trying to rezone the northwest corner there. Uh, and um, this property, uh, where the ABC um, builders and mm -hmm. constructors, whatever, um, offices, that area, including this parcel, uh, is zoned right of business already. So it was, uh, so they moved their plans so down to fit. there. Yes, and I do have a copy of the state uh, approval for a driveway cut on the 67, and then they understand that before they can begin their approval, their construction, um, they'll have to obtain a drainage permit, a driveway permit, um, and uh, it, it if their outlet is going to the regulated drain to the north, they'll have to go to the drainage board. So they understand all that. There are a lot of things that still need to be done. This is sort of the first step in creating the two lots, lot one and lot two. So they're going to use both lots? No, both. lot one contains the existing building for ABC oh, uh, Apprenticeship things. Trust. Okay, very good. The south lot is the one that would be the south lot two. Okay, thank you, Marta. Thank you, Spencer. Motion to approve. Second. I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to uh, hold on to this for another oh, yeah. meeting. Mm -hmm. It's my thought. Okay, well. Well, we table it then. I'll make a motion to table it. I'll second. Uh, motion, or uh, roll call, please. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. Kennedy. Yes. Ms. Rigger. Yes. Thank you. Can we get the uh, copies of the accurate layout, please? <clears throat> Thank you. That's the uh, plat. Now, they have also filed um, with the Board of Zoning Appeals for a variance because they need to, uh, because the driveway, and we've got a site plan that shows their layout, Chandler. Okay. Um, and uh, the um, under the development standards of the county zoning ordinance, there's a 50-foot building line all the way around. Uh, and they, because of the driveway, uh, they need to uh, slide the building to the south, and they'll have a 35-foot side setback rather than 50. So they're requesting a variance. And um, they were set for uh, a meeting the end of this month but that meeting was uh, subject to the approval of the plat. So okay. that will have to be continued in front of the BZA as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, <clears throat> resolution number 2019-025. Make a motion to approve. A second. Roll call. Mr. Kane. Yes, Mr. Henry. Yes, Ms. Rigg. Yes. Okay, resolution number 2019-026. Identifying the tax certificate. Anybody here to speak on this behalf? Uh, is this the parcel for uh, uh, the month's mission? I believe so. It's down there. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Roll call. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. King. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Department heads, elected officials. Did I hear them? Oh, yes. Well, I'll just go ahead and take this opportunity then. Melanie Marshall, Delaware County Fair Board member, and the fair kicked off this past week with 4-H events, and we've already had a couple of grandstand events. We've got lots of fun things coming up this week, so please come out and join us. And tonight it's the um, Barnyard, Barnyard Olympics. And the gate opens at 4. Or gate is open all day. And that's when they charge. Right, because uh, today's the 4-H swine show. And um, I, our <coughs> Delaware County Fair Queen and her court have done an outstanding job representing us. I don't know if any of you heard them on the radio this morning. 
um, plugging the events, and they've been out there. We've been keeping them busy, so I think they're having a great time so far. And the auction is on. The, it's always on Wednesday. Wednesday, and I believe that starts two, at two o'clock. Two o'clock. So everybody can show up and buy a pig or two. Or <laughs> Jason, could you come in here, please? Jason, have you had anybody from the city of Muncie contact you in reference to any agreements or anything about the EMS? Okay, we got a letter back from um, Cork Hunter. It says, uh, Dear John, this letter's in reference to the above uh, entitled correspondence. The city of Muncie has received your letter dated July 1st, 2019, as well as your letter dated June 3rd, 2019. The city of Muncie was not aware that they needed to provide a plan of any type for the Delaware County Commissioners for the actions they take in the city of Muncie. The last communication we had with the commissioners on the topic, we were told we can do whatever we want. However, to show to Mr. Retz that this has been taken care of, Muncie Fire Chief Eddie Bell has already scheduled a meeting with the 911 director. This meeting has been scheduled to move forward with this great opportunity to protect the citizens of Muncie to save lives and continue the outstanding work of the city of Muncie first responders, signed by John Perk, addressed to the commissioners. Um, but you've not been contacted about any kind of agreements or anything? No, not, I've not been contacted about um, any agreements, you know, any interlocal agreement or uh, any intercept agreement with the city of Muncie by any of the Muncie officials. Um, I've heard from other EMS departments that they've been contacting, trying to work their work around us, apparently, uh, but that's their prerogative. So it's my opinion that without any type of working agreement, like we have on file right now, um, if something should happen that the city of Muncie um, put these ambulances in service, that at that point we pull. Well, we got one truck here. Two yeah, trucks. there's two there's two trucks currently there's two trucks assigned to the downtown station two two ambulances uh and then you've got the yeah. others the yeah. others that are not that are outside the city limits uh, that's my opinion I, I just think it'll get um it'll cause problems and be hectic without any kind of agreement or any communication other than a nasty letter from their attorney well the attorney for the city that sent us that letter jason who provides EMS service to the city of Muncie right now? Delaware County EMS. Does the city of Muncie have ambulance service right now? No. Well, they own ambulances. They, they own provide. ambulances, but they have no service right now. Correct. Right? Correct. So when they get up and running, how do we know, you know, are we still going to take calls? We don't know any of that. That's why I say we Well, the local union, was it 1348 for the fire department? Yeah, the IFF. Yeah. One thing not debatable is eight ambulances is greater than five. Where are they getting eight at? Because they only bought four. Right. So are they still planning on having R5 run with their three? What areas will R5 run? What areas will their three run? So I don't think Mr. Quirk really understands when he sent that letter. This is just a little bit bigger and a little bit more than what he's talking about. We need to know something. Are our ambulances going to stay within the city limits? Are we still going to have the five coming in? Are they only going to stay within the fire district with those uh, ambulances that they're putting in their firehouses? You know, we need to know something. Are we supposed to still work with them and cover? That's what we're trying to find out. But I think it's like everything else that goes on, they don't have no plan to do anything. It seems like it's just spin, 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 spin. Unlike the county, you know, we're in pretty good financial shape. You know, with, with our council doing everything that they do with what we do and, and we work together, you know, we're in good shape. We just need for them to come up and say, you guys are booted out of the city as soon as we're up and running or we're only going to run in these districts and you guys are going to run in the other five districts 
that's what we're trying to figure out, and nobody wants to tell us anything. Well, from the meeting that um, we had with the, the city council, uh, it was made pretty obvious that they were going to run citywide. Uh, I, I mean, I, the mayor said, that why wouldn't they? And, and that's the people that they serve. So I would assume that that's their plan. But I, again, I've not received any information on, on what they're planning to do. I can tell you this from 20 years of experience you can you can create a district mm -hmm. but in ems you're so busy that 80 percent of the time you're not going to be in that district because there's so many calls right uh, and that's not i mean that's true of of so many different jurisdictions um and like i said i i think there you know there's there's just so many questions and uh we're not getting any answers um you know nothing nothing official the last time i was approached they wanted me to come up with a plan uh, for them, and we we put some things together, and it was not palatable because they weren't getting paid. So, yeah. um, well, I thought the same know. thing you did, Jason. You know that they were going to get the three, they were going to put them in, they were going to run everything themselves, and then, you know, the the fire union that is supporting that, that's going against their EMS brothers, stayed in there. You know that eight are better than five. Well, they don't have eight ambulances. So, are they going to use us? Are they going to bring from what I've been what I've been told from other um, other EMS services is they have no plans to use us at all, and, and it's they're they're doing everything <coughs> to power uh, their EMS chief or their alleged EMS chief is is doing everything in her power to work around dealing with us or working with us. And that's all we would like to know. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Like we just we just need to know that. Yeah. I just I, I'm worried that this will cost people their lives if it's not if they don't have a solid plan. Um, and if we need to be part of that plan, I'm willing to do that. But I'm not willing to go out there. They put three trucks in service, and us just go out there and whoever gets a call gets it. I, I'm not doing that. Well, there's got to be some organization. There's got to be. We got to have some agreements. We got. We got to have something. I agree. Their their billing agent uh, that that they they proposed. He made a couple of statements that are very concerning about how they would get dispatched first, and if they needed ALS, then they would call us. But they're not waiting another six or eight minutes for for ALS, so they're just going to take the patients to the hospital. And and uh, there's just some some concerning things there. I mean, when we've been dual dispatched for years. Um, I, I can tell you the model for us would, would change if, if and when they put these uh, ambulances in. I mean, we would have, we'll, we would have to service our people um, in, in a different manner, meaning our people, meaning our employees. Um, they, would, they would have to be assigned differently um, for us to be able to, to manage and cover, you know, even if we do work with them. So. Um, whether we know or we don't know, things are going to change as far as Delaware County EMS is concerned, um, no, no matter what. I have uh, sat down with uh, my command staff and we have three different options of, of uh, moving forward when this happens. And um, I'm quite confident that any one of those three will be um, effective for the <coughs> citizens of Delaware County. Um, whether or not it will be effective for the citizens of Muncie, I can't tell you. I just think they need to at least let us know something because I hear they're looking to get started here soon. Well, that's, that's what I'm hearing too. Two, you can't. And, you know, and all this honestly, is what I was told yesterday. And, and honestly, even the guys that work EMS, they need to know something too. Absolutely. You know, and we can't tell them anything. We can't do anything until the city comes in and, you know, this is our plan. We're going to cover these areas. We'd like for you guys to still continue these areas, or you know, you guys are just totally out. Okay, Paul. Paul has some information that he might be able to provide. He just told me, so okay. I'd love to hear it as well. As well. Okay. <laughs> Paul Singleton, Director 911. Um, I did have a meeting with Eddie Bell and Rachel Clark. Clark, yes. And the only thing that we have con confirmed to this point is they're going to run their ambulances in the same fire districts as twos, threes, and six, which would be 
the station up at it, it, MLK, the one at, on Memorial and Hackley, and the one down on Hoyt. That they're going to run uh, ambulance in each of those stations, and they're going to cover the exact same fire boundaries. That's the only thing we have confirmed at this point. We've got a follow-up meeting. Um, I'm going to be on vacation next week, so the Monday I get back, we have a follow-up meeting to try to lock down some other things. So, items of you guys have to talk about like the toning equipment or how they're going to have the ambulance toned out? Um, we have, and we're going to tone. They're going to be toned the same as the fire trucks. Okay. So there's already toning equipment in there for the fire truck. And they'll they'll stay on uh, fire frequency. That's one thing we haven't got hammered out yet. Um, we're looking at some options of moving one of their channels to. Um, they're EMS, but we've got to do some coordination with the state. So as far as um, I was given no deadline, um, if someone's here on August 1st uh, on our end of it, there's just no way that that can happen by then. So I don't know from our meeting, I don't think they have a drop dead date. We'll keep track of any additional costs because I'm, I don't know. Yeah. It'll go to the city and not the county. Right. Yeah. Jason, I'd like for you to come back up. Yes, ma'am. We put this in layman's terms. I'm the only civilian on this board. <laughs> These two professionals. And I appreciate what all you guys have been working on. So right now, when this fire truck comes and the EMS, that EMS is not going to be there. So they, this ALS ambulance will be taking that patient to the hospital without any, like, what? I, I can't, the short answer to your question is no. Um, what, from what Director Singleton has described, um, they want have ALS ambulances in those three areas, then they would be primarily dispatched. Uh, but my question is, is what happens in one area when the second truck or there's a second call in that area, or you know, are you? How are you covering those? Um, I would say multiple times a day, in excess of a dozen, we have more than than uh, three ambulances on calls at, at a single time. So um, I'm not sure. My question would be how how who's your backup? Which they cited Eaton, they cited uh, Heartland, they cited IU. Um, and, and I've talked to people at all those places, and, and they don't seem to know they, they don't seem to know what's happening either. Um, but what I what I anticipate from this is they would send the, the fire department's ambulance, fire department personnel would would pick up the patient and then just rush them to the hospital. If they were if they were an ALS patient, they they may or may not get ALS care. So your shortness of breaths, your chest pains, your strokes. Um, things that we would do definitive care and treatment for in the field. Um, they, they, don't, they won't have that capability because they won't have the licensure of the people certified to do it. Um, I was told yesterday that they have a three-year plan to get paramedics um, for all those trucks that become an ALS service, so they're, they're buying ALS equipment now. So I, 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 don't, I can't answer that knowledgeably without knowing what they're thinking about doing. Um, however, um, the speculation is, is, is it could be that people don't get definitive care. Uh, and that's, that's certainly a concern. Thank you. You know, the other thing is they, they've already sent us a letter. It should be out of the dispatch center in November, I believe. November, yeah. So what's, what's going to happen? Then? I have no idea. Maybe when something happens, maybe the mayor turn around like he does on everything else. So. I don't know. I don't know nothing about it. I, I can tell you this: the 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 people traveling and visiting Delaware County, um, all the small towns, will have one of the best EMS services yeah. in the state. Yeah. And um, we have a, a group of dedicated staff. Um, that have been through an awful lot. Um, I was looking just the other day, and just paramedics, I've got 11 that have been here more than 10 or 15 years, and, and those people have really been through a lot. So, um, 
you know, we're, we're working to do everything we can do to make sure that we maintain our staff and, um, you know, <coughs> encourage them to, to see the light at the end of the tunnel when, when this is all done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Jason. Thank you. Is it time to share the commissioners what your proposal is? Sure. Um, I guess with uh, the council's <laughs> blessing, um, <coughs> we have looked at some different possibilities, and um, I sent you all a, a plan uh, to give our employees a pay raise, and um, the, the the paramedics uh, are the that is essentially the the pay scale that we have not kept up with times um, and potentially if this uh, is passed through county council um, our employees that have uh, it's broken up into classifications um, a class four paramedic is a brand new person they haven't put a year in they haven't gone through all of their um, i guess indoctrination into to the service all the way, uh, then they, they upgrade a class by completing years of service as well as training. Uh, they have to have good marks on their employee evaluations, their uh, uh, no medical concerns from the medical director, those types of things. And then as they progress through those um, hoops, if you will, then they will increase in class all the way up to a class one paramedic. Uh, class one paramedic will um, this year, re receive, if this is passed by county council, would receive a $5,000 pay raise, and then next year would receive a $10,000 pay raise. So their base salary would increase by $10,000 after, after the five years and, and all of the, um, the stepping stones that they'll have to go through to um, get to that point. We have several people that will be class one paramedics this year and next year. Um, and then they will gradually uh, increase uh, and be able to attain um, pay those pay raises. So basically you're, you're set your first year in the base salary, then you get a $2,000 raise, then a $3,000 raise, then a $5,000 raise over five years. Um, but there are benchmarks for each one of those, those particular classes. So you can be, if you can't reach a, a class two paramedic position by three years, that's because you failed to maybe go to, go to training, do something properly, you've got complaints, you've got bad uh, employee reviews, you've got bad medical treatment reviews, some, something along those lines are keeping you from doing that. So um, it's, it's an encouragement for people to invest in their education, it's an encouragement for people to um, stay with us, and um, it's not such a long-term uh, um, stepping stone that it's not attainable. So we, we feel like that'll help us with retention on paramedics. And that's why I say I know that uh, today, as of today, I think we have 11 uh, class five paramedics, people have been here more than 10 years. Um, and and that, that'll be good news to them. They've not heard this yet, so I'm sure that I'll go, go back and have a lot of questions. <laughs> um, but that, that, uh, that plan, um, as you have all indicated through email, you're supporting and uh, we're, we're hoping to pass that this time through the finance committee and then on to council and then into the 2020 budget. I think it's a great idea. Yeah. Glad that you put it together and we can afford it. And while you're up there, would you like to fill us in on the endurance on? Uh, we had another successful uh, year of Ironman. Uh, it's like 2,000 athletes into the water and 2,000 athletes out of the water. That's the one thing that I, I am uh, quite concerned with every year because statistically, uh, you know, they, there are people that drown in events like this uh, and, and we host several of these a year, so that's our biggest concern. Uh, it went off with, without a hitch. Uh, we had a couple of patients uh, that did end up being transported to the hospital. Um, a couple of them were ALS patients. Uh, that were, were treated uh, for severe condition, uh, but everybody is, uh, is stable. Um, great job by the medical staff and, and certainly our staff that get, gets them back to the medical tent and, uh, and we run a command structure out there that's second to none for large events. So um, it's dangerous, it's a, it's a mile and a half swim, it's a 57 mile bike ride and a 13 mile run. So um, it's, uh, it's certainly an all day event. And we, we basically set up an entire EMS service out there. Uh, I think we had five, six, six, 
five truck, five five transport ambulances, and and, and three supervisors uh, that were that were running the event. So it was uh, again successful this year. Very well, thanks. Thanks, Jason. Yeah, do you want me to bring up the the truck now? Just while I'm standing yes. here. Yeah, yeah. I, I've just we've got one vehicle that's um, due to be sold at auction. It's a uh, 2007 chassis. I believe it's a 1988 box. It was last um, remounted in 2008. Um, Denise, did you get the email? Yes. I'll, I'll just read the VIN off for the record. It's 1GBJG31627122091. Um, I'm asking that that be able to be um, deemed as surplus and we'll get it on the auction site to, to sell. That truck's been replaced by uh, an ambulance that we've remounted, so it's it's already off the insurance. I'll make a motion we approve the request. Second. Roll call. Mr. Kane. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Riga. Yes. Thank you, Commissioner. Thank, Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> so this, see this year over there, and I'm sure you had a lot of your staff out there helping. Toby Skinner got to work on a ship. Yeah, we have, I don't know the exact number, but we have uh, dozens of people assisting with the Iron Man. And like Jason said, we didn't have any issues. Uh, so kudos to those who organized this event. It's a great event for Delaware County and Muncie, and uh, we appreciate the business. And then this week you're going to be at the fair, so you guys are going to be busy. We will be at the fair all week, like Melanie said. So yeah, if you don't have plans, come on out and get some great food. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? <clears throat> okay. Payments of claims one million eight hundred thirty-seven thousand three hundred and twenty-seven dollars and twenty cents. Motion uh, to approve the payment of claims. On second. Roll call. Mr. Henry. Yes. Mr. Kane. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Now it's time for the public. I got some people out there that have any comments. If not, I'll make it in the recess. I'll second. Roll call. Mr. King. Yes. Mr. Henry. Yes. Ms. Reagan. Yes. Thank you.